Welcome back, friends and DGens. I've been playing at this amazing underground poker game for the past few weeks. Oh, man. Fuck it, let's gamble. All right, this is a dream game stocked with deep pocketed, blueless donks. Donk, donk, donkey, donkey brained. Every Friday, these gamblers show up to play cards, bet sports, and trash talk their wives. Yeah, my wife. <laughs> This game is so exclusive that if you don't get a personal invite, you won't make it through the door. Sorry, you can't come in. So how did I wind up here? How much did I win? And what food did they serve? Oh yeah, baby. Ooh, and chicken too, god damn. I'll answer all those questions in just a minute. But first, I have to explain what happened after Grand Rapids, an interesting proposition, and the future of this channel. So let's get into it. I'm Mike Reardon, part-time poker pro, and this is vlog number 10, The Counter. At the end of the last episode, I received a response from the Silent Aces Society. After waiting months, I finally had an answer if they were going to approve my promotion to full-time Poker Pro. The letter reads, After careful review, we regret to inform you that, at this time, we have rejected your application for membership as a full-time poker professional. For the time being, you will remain at the level of part-time poker professional. You should not quit your day job because you are still not eligible for health insurance nor the 401k. That really hurt. This news couldn't have come at a worse time. I was depressed after I lost a ton of money. I didn't have any ideas for my next video. Kayla was mad at me for some unknown reason. And now my lifelong dream of becoming a full-time poker pro was swirling down the drain like one of Kayla's two foot long hairs in the bathroom. Ugh. And just like those shower hairs, long after we thought they were washed down the drain, our dreams can still stick around and clog up our lives. I continued reading the letter. The decision to reject your application was heavily debated, especially after we witnessed the reckless conduct you displayed in your vlog. Excessive gambling, delusional arrogance, shameless lying, and a constant disdain for your wife. These are absolutely dreadful behaviors that are not just suitable for our members, but they are in fact the most desirable traits we wish to be associated with our entire poker community. No other vlogger has had the courage to openly broadcast how toxic and self-destructive the poker lifestyle is, so we decided to offer you this counter. We will award you with the highest ranked status of full-time poker pro if you complete a list of 10 short tasks that we assign. Each task must be a separate video in the vlog. You may not refuse or even question any assigned task, no matter how silly or unrelated to poker it may seem. If all 10 tasks are completed by December 31st, 2024, then you will officially be a full-timer and thus will be eligible to enroll in our coveted health insurance policy. We hope that you find these terms acceptable. Good luck. And just like that, I had a new way to fulfill my dream. Even better, this counter conveniently outlines the future of my channel. So starting today, I'll produce at least one video a month in 2024. As long as I upload all 10 videos in one year, I'll finally be elevated to the rank of full-time poker pro. I will try to make more videos, but I still have a gaming addiction, a full-time job, and a distracting wife that eats away at my free time. So I can only commit to one video a month for 2024. Stop it! And sure enough, I have the first task. Repair the nasty countertop in your kitchen. That's awfully specific. Maybe this is a test to see how I integrate the poker lifestyle into any boring mundane task and make it entertaining. So I guess we're doing this. That filthy kitchen countertop is long overdue for a replacement. It's nice to have some motivation to finally tackle a project I've neglected since 2011. Kayla will certainly be excited because she has not stopped nagging me about that vile kitchen since she moved in. Wasting no time, I set up the cameras and started recording for the vlog. All right, the first task is I've got to replace this countertop with something better. Granite. As you can see, this is some garbage, just trash countertop. We're gonna replace it with something good quality. I'm a bit of the DIYer myself. I do most of the home repairs in my house, and I do a pretty good job. Even though I've never done it before, I'm sure it won't be that hard. We already moved everything off the counters. Give it a quick clean and get started. I will need to talk to somebody about getting the granite cut to size. That'll be the next step. First things first, I had to thoroughly clean the counters. Oh shit, oh shit. Kayla! Kayla! Uh, Fuck. Kay Kayla was confused and surprised when she came home from the store. But as soon as I explained the project, she was okay. shaking with excitement. Can you clean this up? How much f***ing shit did you put down here? I can't even f breathe, Mike. I, I don't know how much you're supposed to use this stuff. Uh, 
She Get even demanded that I take a break and let her finish okay. cleaning. Get, get out of here, fine, I'll fucking clean it. Probably so I wouldn't tire out too quickly and I could finish the job all in one weekend. It's very thoughtful of her. Aww. I tried one more time to help her clean up, but she quickly chased me away. Even though she didn't say it out loud, I could tell that she was very grateful. It sucked that she couldn't use the kitchen during the remodel, but it would be worth it when she sees the beautiful new granite countertops. But that's where it got a little tricky, because I don't know anything about granite. How to cut it, where to buy it, what even is granite. So I called my friend JB. I met him playing cards a few years back. This is JB, but everyone calls him <laughs> Professor Parlay. Yo, JB, you know anyone that can do granite? I gotta replace my counter. Hey, yeah, I know a granite guy. Right. JB knows a guy that can do granite. He just needs the cash up front. Excited to complete my first task, I quickly drove over to JB's place with my hot wad of cash. When I arrived, I heard the sound of poker chips, shuffling carts, and dry coughing <laughs> calling to me from the basement. <laughs> this was the legendary Friday round by round game, and oh boy, did it look juicy! Come on, man. Come on. When I walked into the basement, Yo, up, JB man? greeted me with some bad news. Yeah, for the granite there. Uh, hey, you should be here in a minute, man. If you want to hey. grab a seat, man, go ahead. Gus, his granite guy, was at least an hour away. So he invited me to play a little while I wait. Go sit down and play some poker, brother. All right, I know he's trying to suck me into the game with my countertop money. But all these players do look like easy money. They're all just drinking and shoving all in every hand. I could easily win the money I need before Gus even gets here. And then I have an excuse to leave because I'm in his sit seat. Sit down and play some poker, brother. Fuck it. What's the worst that can happen? Let's gamble. So the granite guy's not there yet, but he'll be there soon. I had a little bit of time to kill, and I've played with these idiots before, and I figured, hey, why not? You know, I got two grand I need for the granite, but I could probably win that much before this dude gets here, because these guys suck. They're terrible. Let's talk about a couple of hands. This video has two villains, JB and Run It Twice Tim. Both of these guys will get it in with complete trash, just for the sweat. I can win big here. I just have to wait patiently for my spot. I bought in for 500 bucks while I was still setting up my secret spy camera. The camera was so small that nobody even realized I was wearing it. Oh shit, there's queso? Pocket queens in late position. It's a setup. Tim straddles 10 on the button. We see three callers before it makes its way over to me. Now I know what Tim's gonna do, and if he has the opportunity to bet in position, he's gonna push, and he's gonna push hard. But what am I gonna do, fold queens here? My hand's pretty good. So I decide to call the 10, knowing that Tim's gonna pot. And sure enough, he pots. Both the blinds fold, JB and I make the call. We got three players on the flop with about 200 bucks in the pot. And God damn, I flopped the nut straight with the diamond redraw. JV checks it to me and I don't waste any time. I pot for 200. Tim comes out firing and repots without missing a beat. JV gets his chips right in the middle. Obviously I'm gonna call right here. $1,700 pot, let's go. We got action boys. Tim shows his hand. He's got top set with nut spades as a backup plan. I don't remember what JV had, but let's just say it was some bullshit. All right, I'm good as long as this board doesn't pair. We get an eight of hearts on the turn, and <laughs> an eight of spades on the river. God damn. Tim wins a $1,700 pot. Oh my, my first hand in, and I'm already down 500. Fuck Tim, dude. God damn it. All right, I guess time to buy in for another 500. I'm in for 1,000 now. Let's go to the next hand. Ace, queen, jack, two with diamonds. We're in early position. Tim's gonna do his thing. He's gonna raise every hand. JB gets in there too. Just another 15 bucks to close the action, so I call. On the flop, top two pair with the nut diamond redraw. Also, any king will get us the straight. We check the Tim, he pots, JB folds, I repot, and Tim, probably having nothing, gets out of the hand. We make just over 100 bucks on that pot. Next hand, him starting off with a $10 button straddle. I'm holding ace three, jack five with two suits, nut diamonds. There's three more callers before it's my turn. I call. I'm thinking Tim's gonna raise like he normally does. To my surprise, he checks. Just over 50 bucks in that pot, and we flop. Top three pair, hell yeah. Checks around the table. We hit a turn that doesn't help anybody. Another round of checks. Nobody wants to bet. On the river, we pair the board, we make fives full of jacks. By the time it gets to me, I throw a $10 bet out there and everybody folds. Weak. At least we win a pot. We won like 40 bucks or some shit. Weak. We're back in Hold'em. Queen nine suited. We're in the big blind. The hijack raises to 12 bucks. Small blind calls and I call to close the action. We got three players at the flop with 36 bucks in the pot. Flop comes nine high. We hit top pair. Everybody checks. Another five shows up on the turn, pairing the board. The small blind and I both check, 
and the hijack takes a stab at it for 25. I'm thinking this dude doesn't have a five. So I raise to 75 and he immediately folds. I'm crushing it. Let's go, baby. All right, we've been winning a couple small pots, but none of the big ones. So let's change that. We're in early position holding jacks with ace queen of clubs. Tim fires off for 25. He gets one color until JB raises to 100. At this point, JB and Tim both have pretty decent sized stacks, so this could get dangerous. And I know if I flat here, Tim's gonna come over the top and shove anyway. So I might as well be the aggressor and there's a possibility I could get somebody to fold. So I said, fuck. I jam for 430 and I cannot believe how fast everybody else got their chips in the pot We're looking at a four-way all-in pre-flop pots about three thousand dollars. Oh boy. We got action Everybody tables their hands JB sitting on king king queen ten with diamonds Tim has some bullshit 10478 two suits. Oh good hand Tim good hand. I don't even remember what the cutoff had whatever it didn't matter Oh that's the worst flop ever. Oh my eight, four, five, six, nine. Oh, JB God. wins a three thousand dollar pot, and I'm down another buy in. I just lost all my granite money. You gonna rebuy? You that motherfucker, JB, dude. What the? Fuck? This is some bullshit. I almost booked the L and went home, but my poker sense was tingling and telling me I couldn't leave yet. Yeah. I'm down a thousand bucks, but this game is fire. I have another thousand and there's still a lot of food oh, yeah, here. Baby. Ooh, and chicken too, god damn. Also, I'm pretty sure that the shower at home is still clogged. So I did what any degenerate gambler would have done. I grabbed the rest of the cash from my pocket and I bought back in. You'll have to watch the next video if you want to see the rest of this wild game. You can watch it right here. And if you like the shirt I'm wearing, you can buy one at parttimepokerpro.com. Since I started editing this video before Thanksgiving, you'll still have plenty of time to buy the shirt as a Christmas gift too. I mean, it shouldn't take more than a week for me to finish editing this masterpiece. Wait, when did this video upload? After Christmas? Oh my god, Jesus Christ.